Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Tilray stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Tilray is a Canadian pharmaceutical and cannabis company. It has operations in Australia, New Zealand, Germany, Portugal, and Latin America. The company is headquartered in Ontario, Canada, and was founded in 2013. It started trading in 2019 and can be found on the TSX, NASDAQ, Swiss, Deutsche Versa, and Zetra. In September 2018, it became the first Canadian cannabis company to legally export medical cannabis to the U.S. In December 2018, the company signed a deal with Sandoz, that's a subsidiary of Novartis, to sell, distribute, and co-brand Tilray's non-smokable, non-combustible medical cannabis products in legal markets worldwide. On December 15, 2020, Afria conducted a reverse acquisition of Tilray, creating the largest cannabis company by revenue. The CEO of Afria stated that the merger strategy was to capture Tilray's business assets and public trading strategy in the US and its free trade abilities in Europe, enabling potential for becoming a global operation. The merged company will keep Tilray's name and trade under the Tilray ticker. In case you were wondering what a reverse acquisition is, it's when a private company acquires a public company so they become public. It's just a way to circumvent the IPO process by acquiring a public company. By combining assets, the new Tilray company will develop craft beer and cannabis-infused beverages in partnership with Anheuser-Busch InBev and have branded hemp and cannabidiol products. Cannabis is a really big market. It's supposed to be $94 billion by 2025. And since Tilray is the biggest company, that creates a lot of opportunity for them and for its investors. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 8.9 billion market cap. They're trading at $20 a share and they have 446 million shares outstanding. We're going to look at the ticker of the trades on the TSX. So all the numbers in this video are in Canadian dollars. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow each year since they're not profitable, plus they're investing a lot back into their business. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They did have a small profit in 2018, but negative after that. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grows amazingly from 37 million up to over 600 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit, and their gross profit grew a lot from 41 million to 192 million. Below that is operating expenses. And they do have high operating expenses, so they have negative operating income every year, a small positive in 2020. They have a decent amount of debt, so they pay $29 million of interest on their debt in the trailing 12 months. The reason their net income looks so bad in the trailing 12 months was this negative $500 million in other income and expenses. I would usually ignore most things in other income and expenses and just focus on operating income if I was looking at the income statement. So even with $600 million of revenue, they're still operating at a negative. I know it takes time, but once they become profitable, their margins will increase a lot faster. Because most of the money you generate after break even falls to the bottom line. Before you hit break even, it's all going to expenses. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You can think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash. Because net income is your accounting profit or loss, it's not actual cash. So they are losing money every single year from their operational business. They also have a good amount of money in CapEx each year, over $200 million in 2018 and 19, because they have to build a lot of warehouses and any machinery to make the products. And they're using debt and equity to fund their business. They issued 200 million of stock in 2018, then 245 million, then 100 million. Every time a company issues stock, that dilutes the current shareholders, making your shares less valuable. They also add a lot of debt. They added nearly half a billion in 2019 and 82 million in 2020. But this company seems to be aggressively trying to grow their brand, investing everything and more back into their business to try to grow it. If they become profitable, they'll become really profitable because they're leveraging themselves. But there is a risk they may never become profitable. This is the equity section of their balance sheet and they raised $2.1 billion from selling stock. And historically, they lost $600 million from running their business. So they still have a good amount of room to go. They have about $1.4 billion to lose before there's a big problem. 
Let's look at the capital structure. One and a half billion of equity, 900 million of debt. They're 62% equity, 38% debt. And their weighted average cost of capital, which is a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt is 7.35%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $11 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $8.2 billion. We divide that by 446 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1848. They're trading at $20, so they're trading at a 9% premium. It's a sell according to the model. The stock shot up 26% yesterday after the company reported a quarterly profit and the CEO said they should have $4 billion of revenue by 2024. That's $4 billion US dollars, which is the same as $5 billion Canadian dollars. So if they have $5 billion Canadian dollars of revenue by 2024, and they convert 10% of that to free cash flow, which is about the average a company converts to free cash flow, they would have $500 million of free cash flow by 2024. That's how I got my number. And I'm still coming out with a stock price lower than they're trading at. The CEO of the company is basing this on America legalizing cannabis in the next 18 to 24 months. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. So I highly question that they'll have 5 billion Canadian dollars of revenue by 2024. But I just put that into my model. But I don't really think they're going to have that much. I think that's a pretty lofty goal. Simply Wall Street values the company at $27 a share. So they're saying the stock is 25% undervalued. This is the stock price since it started trading on the TSX. When the company first IPO'd, they were trading in the United States. They just recently started trading on the TSX. You can see the stock did really well the first few months it started trading in Canada. It looks like it peaked at about $27, $28. Then it came down a lot. Then it had that big boost yesterday. And this is a really volatile stock. The beta is 2.62, so the stock moves two and a half times the market. The stock has gone down 17% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 is up 36%. The 52 week low was 16, the high was 28. Even with the big boost yesterday, the stock is still trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. One to one and a half million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 446 million shares outstanding, 428 million are on float. Only 9% are held by institutions and 2% of the shares are shorted. Analysts are really bullish on this company, projecting their earnings to grow 73% and their revenue to grow 23%, a lot more than its industry and the market. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it started trading in the United States in 2018, you'd be at $5,700 today. That's a 43% loss. The ex-CEO of the company, Brendan Kennedy, owns 2% of the stock. Then ETF managers, Heights Capital. Brendan Kennedy runs a fund that invests in cannabis companies. His two partners are Michael Blue and Christian Grow, and they both own about 1% of this company's stock. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Their price to book is okay at 5.9. Most of the 1.5 billion of equity on their balance sheet is intangible assets. That came from all the acquisitions it's done. They have a high current ratio of 3.4, a high quick ratio of 1.8. They have 267 million of cash on their balance sheet, 91 million of receivables, and a lot of inventory, 341 million of inventory. So they are well capitalized. They have over $500 million of working capital, and it looks like they're starting to become profitable. So their free cash flow may be positive going forward. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 10 other cannabis stocks, and if Tilray has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. Only two cannabis stocks have positive earnings, the rest have negative, so it's hard to look at the PE ratios. Tilray is doing better than average in price to sales, price to book, and current ratio. All the companies have really bad ROE since they have negative earnings. Tilray is a little worse in debt, and they're the third largest company in terms of market cap at 8.9 billion. I converted all these market caps to Canadian dollars, so they're equivalent. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 9% premium, but if you're really bullish on cannabis stocks, then this is a good company to buy. They should be the top company soon with all the acquisitions they're doing. The big negative with cannabis stocks is a lot of funds don't buy them. And funds buy the most stock because they can buy millions of shares at a time because they have a lot of money. Even though there's more individual investors, individual investors usually can't buy more than a few hundred shares at a time. And some people just won't buy cannabis stocks, even if they show profitability and show a lot of results. But if these companies become really profitable and make a lot of money, I'm sure a lot of people will change their minds, especially some of the big funds, because it's all about making money. At least that's the goal for Wall Street. 
I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 9 out of 10, and their ratio is 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.